This video is going to feature my updated junk drawer. A junk drawer is a drawer found in your home, most likely in your kitchen, that starts accumulating various supplies that you use on a regular basis within your home, and it's usually a complete mess. Well, I've revamped my junk drawer, so let's take a look at it now. Let's get started with this video featuring my revamped junk drawer. Let's get started. Hey everyone, my name is Cliff, also known as The Urban Prepper, and here on my channel I feature a lot of emergency preparedness videos for those living in an urban environment. Now, a junk drawer isn't typically an emergency situation, but my junk drawer became one. Several years back, I made a dedicated video featuring my junk drawer back when we were living in an apartment. So I did some research online on what items you should ideally have in your junk drawer, in addition to some online research for how to properly organize your junk drawer. So I bought a few drawer organizers and had everything properly categorized and I even made a PDF document that the whole family could follow. Since that video, we did move to a different home and we established a new junk drawer. Over the years, it would slowly start building up random stuff that would fall into that junk drawer and remain in there. And it seemed like no one was following the nice PDF that I made for the junk drawer. So in this video, we're gonna clean out the junk drawer, we're gonna reorganize it, and make some improvements from the previous edition of my junk drawer. So to get back to a baseline, I removed everything that was in that junk drawer. It was amazing all of the various items that had fallen into that junk drawer over the years. It was a bunch of random things like to-go menus, chopsticks, and we even found a pipe in there. I have no idea who in the house is using a pipe. I interrogated the family, but none of them fessed to it. While most of the items that were in that junk drawer were just complete garbage, there were some things that I wanted to keep, especially the organization trays. So I got those trays out and cleaned them up a little bit. They still had labels from the previous version of the junk drawer, which were no longer being followed. So before starting the project, I just wiped down the junk drawer to get it to a fresh start. Then I had to go through that big bin of random stuff in the junk drawer and find the things that were actually useful. So things like scissors and some of the tools and various office supplies were all valuable. I probably don't need 30 pens in there, so I scaled that down a bit. I don't think it matters what organization trays that you get for your junk drawer. I got these particular ones from Amazon, but you could easily go with ones that you could find at the dollar store or anywhere else. Just find something that's affordable and works with your particular drawer dimensions. So for this version of the revamped junk drawer, I wanted to make sure that I had the proper categories of items that we wanted to include in the junk drawer. So to help keep my junk drawer a little bit more organized, I wanted to establish a labeling system for the various categories of items that are included in the junk drawer. One of my most frequently used items for organization is my label maker. I wanted to heavily use the label maker not only for the category of items, but also for specific items that seem to always make their way outside of the junk drawer and into our home where they would no longer be found again. I wanted to make it super clear to everyone in the family that, hey, this item belongs in the junk drawer. So the label maker that I have comes in very handy for that. If the label falls off, just put a new one on. Here are all the essential items that I am keeping in this current version of the junk drawer. Now I have removed some of the items that were in my previous edition of the junk drawer just because I found that they weren't commonly used. I'm gonna go fairly rapid fire with the list of all the essential items that I'm currently keeping in the junk drawer. I think it's best to go with items that are fairly inexpensive. So if and when that item gets lost, it's not gonna be the end of the world. Again, all of the items that are currently stored in the junk drawer are ones that my family finds that we actually use on a regular basis. Let's start going through those items now in rapid fire. In the first aid compartment, I have Band-Aids and Neosporin. When someone gets a cut, rather than finding the full-size first aid kit, it's very convenient to have a few Band-Aids in the junk drawer in addition to some Neosporin to help prevent infection. That's all I really have in the first aid module of the junk drawer. If I need anything else, I'm gonna go into the main first aid kit. Next, in the fire compartment, I have a few Bic lighters and I also have some matches. These could be used for lighting candles during power outages, birthday candles during a birthday party, or lighting some incense. In the next compartment, I have all of the various office supply adhesives, starting off first with some scotch tape. And yes, I wanted to have that one labeled because the scotch tape seems to always go missing. I also have a stapler. This is a miniature swing line stapler. And to go with that, I also have a staple remover. And then last, I also have some super glue for minor repairs. And those are all of the items in the adhesives compartment. Next to that, I have my hygiene items. So I have some nail clippers. Even though the bathroom is very close to the kitchen, we still like having those nail clippers nearby. I also have some tweezers. 
These can be used for various precision-based tasks, like removing bones from salmon that you're about to cook. And I also have tweezers that are better suited for removing splinters. And those are all of the items in that hygiene compartment. Above that, I have the pens and pencils compartment. I just have a random set of pens, sharpies, and pencils. These are handy for jotting down quick notes, making grocery lists, labeling items, or leaving messages. This particular storage area isn't too incredibly long, so you can't have a really long pencil in there. But pen-sized pencils and sharpies fit perfectly. And we found that you only really need several pens and pencils. I don't need to have 30 or 50 of them. Next to that storage area, I have a larger area for scissors and flashlights. And my wife said that she couldn't find a flashlight when she needed one, so I made sure to include two flashlights in there. My go-to flashlight for smaller projects is the Streamlight Stylus Pro. So I picked up a couple extra Streamlight Stylus Pros in blue so they're easy to find. I also made sure to label these ones so they don't end up making their way in a purse or backpack or something like that. These ones belong in the junk drawer. I also have some scissors. For general office type tasks, I prefer Fisker scissors, and these ones are fairly inexpensive. These can be used for opening up packages, cutting coupons, trimming food packaging, and it's probably one of the more commonly used items out of the junk drawer. So again, I wanted to have these labeled as well. My daughter prefers using smaller scissors, so I made sure to include some kid scissors in the junk drawer as well. She uses these for various school activities. And I also have a laser pointer for the cat in that particular area. A lot of preppers use laser pointers for tactical reasons, but we use it to keep our cat entertained. In the back of the storage tray I have various miscellaneous items. So I have a long Bic lighter, which is fairly handy to use when lighting birthday candles. I also have some duct tape. We found that we don't really need to have a full roll of duct tape, so I just have a minimal amount that's wrapped around a card. You could actually buy these on Amazon pre-made, and they're fairly compact in size. Also in that particular storage area, I have the dog nail clippers. These always seem to go missing in our home when we need to trim the dog's nails. So while we do have an extra set of these clippers in the bathroom, I also have some in the junk drawer. Probably the most expensive item that I have in this junk drawer is a fingertip oxygen monitor. This allows you to quickly and conveniently measure blood oxygen levels. It's come in fairly handy on occasion when we've had various illnesses and health issues. It provides timely insights and peace of mind. I also have a ruler. This is handy not only for measuring but also for drawing straight lines which is beneficial during some of the school projects that my kids do. And instead of having a larger organization compartment for office and fastening supplies, I just have a small dish now that has those items in there. We found that we most commonly use push pins, paper clips, and nails. Sometimes we may have some rubber bands in there or paper clamps, but I've been trying to keep these office and fastening supplies fairly small for the junk drawer purposes. If I need more, I could go into my primary tool bag. Even though nowadays we store most of our batteries in the battery daddy, I do have just a few stored in the junk drawer. In the back of the junk drawer, I also store a lint roller. This one comes in handy all the time, and yes, it does go missing, so I wanted to have it labeled. If we're dressed up nice and we need to get some of that pet hair removed, we use the lint roller. This one normally is in the bathroom, but for some reason it always goes missing in the bathroom. So now we have a dedicated one for the junk drawer. And in the very back of the junk drawer, I have my tools module. Let's just do a quick rundown of all the tools. I have one mini hammer, which is most commonly used for hanging pictures in the home. I also have a multi-bit screwdriver. This is used for assembling furniture or tightening loose screws. I have a small adjustable wrench for tightening or loosening nuts and bolts in a pinch. I also have a few different Allen wrenches in here, also known as a hex key. Usually get these for free when you're assembling various furniture that you might get at Ikea or something like that. And I think it's just handy to have a couple of them nearby because I do find that they get used again. I also have a tape measure. In the previous junk drawer, I had a larger tape measure, but we reduced the size of it because we didn't really need a humongous tape measure. So this is just a very small one and it works perfect for quick measurements around the house. One precision screwdriver that's used for a particular set of screws that are in the home that are very tiny and sometimes need adjusting. And then last, I have a utility blade. This is used for opening packages, cutting cords, and handling other small DIY tasks. This particular one's made by Gerber, and it could also be used for EDC purposes if you like. I know I went a little fast with the rundown of all the essential items, but I have made a PDF document that provides more information on each individual item in addition to a link to where you could purchase that item if you need to get one for yourself. The link to that PDF document is available in the description box below. So I reassembled the junk drawer using the organization trays and the labeled items into their various organization compartments based on their category. With the labels on the individual items, I thought everything would go smoothly. However, I found that the family would randomly put things in the wrong spot. And you could start to see that junk drawer take a turn for the worst in terms of organization. So to fix that, I had to put labeling on the individual storage compartments as well. So I put a label for first aid and for fire and for the adhesives and for hygiene and for pens and pencils, 
scissors and flashlights, miscellaneous items, and the tools. Now each storage area is properly labeled and it's been working better for the family members to put the items back into their designated spot. I think it also helps easily identify imposter items that don't belong in the junk drawer but somehow end up there. One of the other items that I included in the junk drawer is a motion activated light that's attached to the junk drawer itself. So if you have to open up the junk drawer at night and you don't turn on the main light, it provides a level of illumination. This also is handy during a power outage. This one's rechargeable using USB-C and is fairly thin in design. It attaches to the drawer magnetically so it makes it convenient for recharging. I provided a link to it in the PDF document. That's going to do it for this video featuring my updated junk drawer. I hope that you enjoyed watching it. As always, I've included a PDF document. You can download it by clicking the link in the description box below. It has a list of all the items that are featured in this video. So as you can see, my junk drawer is back to its old glory and it's properly organized and labeled with all the various categories of items that I like having in the junk drawer. And by going with a minimalist approach for the junk drawer, it's gonna help you spot some of those imposter items that don't belong in the junk drawer. You'll be able to find those fairly quickly and get them out of there. So hopefully I'll be able to identify when a pipe makes its way into the junk drawer. So in my junk drawer, I don't have any kind of USB cable stored in there. We have those stored in a different drawer. As you can see, that drawer now needs to be reorganized. Stay tuned for an updated video of my USB cable drawer. Please feel free to leave any kind of comments below in the comment section regarding this video. I'd like to hear more about the items that you like having in your personal junk drawers in addition to how you organize them. So leave those comments below and stay tuned for more emergency preparedness videos. See you next time.